Hello and welcome to this video on corking bottles for storing homebrew or any other similar product. A cork is not a common way to seal bottles today. It was very common historically with wine and spirits. It was held to for a very long time because it was relatively easy to use and very effective. Cork fell out of favour after a long period of cork taint. This led to wine with a bad taste and, obviously, People who sold it really weren't happy about having so much wine returned or refused by customers. When this happened in turn, the wine itself was no longer covered by insurance because insurers refused to cover it since they were paying out such large sums for the cork taint issue. As a result, wine sealed with a cork is much rarer now. It's why you rarely see it with anything but, say, champagne or sparkling wine. They have cork as more an aesthetic rather than essential element, although under certain circumstances, especially with pressurised champagne, yes, you will need this. It does not mean cork is not available to you. You can still source cork and use it for your own bottles, but be aware that it is decreasingly common. If you want the design aesthetics of cork, but not the hassle, the plastic and other alternatives exist, and these have fundamentally the same function, but none of the issues. For this, first we have to look at the cork available to you. For the most part, they do come in a single common size, this being somewhere around 1.75 inches or 45 millimeters in diameter. They are either going to be straight or tapered. There are specific champagne corks, which are slightly more mushroom shaped, but they're an exception rather than the rule. Beyond this, to begin, you'll need to choose a pressure rated bottle if it is for carbonated beverages like champagne. If it's for non-carbonated beverages like white or red wine, you can forgo this consideration, but you may want to standardise to that one format. The other thought is to make sure you use a dark glass bottle for your wine. You want to ensure that the contents remain safe and secure for as long as possible, especially if you're going to go to the trouble of corking it. If you're going to go with natural cork, which is probably what comes to your mind when you think of corking, you're going to have to start by soaking the cork in warm water for about 20 minutes. Depending on the size and nature of the cork, you may need to go for a little bit longer, or you may get away with just that amount of time. Warming the water will speed things up, and it's ideal to use distilled water, as you certainly don't want anything like a mineral content from your tap, or the pipes that feed it, getting into your wine. Fill your bottle to about 2.5 centimeters or 1 inch below where the cork will be in the bottle. This should normally be marked on the bottle itself if you are familiar with them, or if not, test one, mark it, and then use that as a guide for every other bottle thereafter. You start by fitting the cork into the top of the bottle. Now you need to get your corking devices and these will come in a variety of formats. A hand corker or a slightly mechanized ratcheting corker will be the cheapest and easiest to get, hand corking being the very cheapest with the ratcheting device being the second most cheap option. With even movements and consistent strokes you will slowly force the cork into the bottle. Once it's recessed just below the surface of the bottle, you can stop. This will ensure that if you want to do something else later on to ensure it's sealed, such as wax, you don't have to worry about the cork getting in the way, and you get a nice consistent hard cap. Before you get to that stage, remove any moisture from the top of the cork and anything that's being compressed out of it. Now you need to leave them upright for 24 hours. This is important, as the air inside the bottle will be able to work its way out through the cork, but moisture shouldn't. This should let any air in the bottle that's pressurized come out, and it should ensure that the cork seals tightly to the bottle. If you are worried about something like, say, pressure or similar, and you could also do this if you wish to make things look a little more professional or aesthetically pleasing, you can use shrink wrap. You place this around the cork and the bottle, and then you heat the shrink wrap. It will, as the name suggests, shrink and compress around it. And this is one way to adequately seal the bottle and avoid any issues about corks popping off. Particularly useful and very commonly seen with bottles that used to be corked but no longer are, where instead screw caps are used. Alternatively, something like a wax seal will also work if you wish to go with a more renewable and sustainable option. Further to what we've already mentioned, there are options beyond natural cork. Most of these are either going to be synthetic or reconstituted cork. Technically, reconstituted cork's not actually a cork, it's called technical cork, and it's 
basically an amalgamation of various products that are used to get the same effect, but none of the risk of cork taint. The most common option for this is going to be something like a plastic plug. Obviously, depending on what you want to do, this may or may not be an effective option for you. If you choose to not use cork at all, you'll likely find yourself going with the options that are seen in most commercial production, which is going to be a screw cap or something similar. If you are really insistent on using something like a cork, but you don't have access to it, or you're not a fan of the idea, such as you've experienced cork taint issues before, you can use more solid stoppers, whether made from metal or glass. We should note that it is strongly suggested against recorking a bottle of wine once it has been opened. It's not that it can't be done. It shouldn't be done. This is because you will end up storing a lot of air in the bottle, and that air will have oxygen and other gases in there and these will lead to flavour changes. In the short term, this may not be a problem, but over a week, and definitely more if not less, you will see flavour changes. For red wine, it's generally accepted that you should leave it to breathe for a time, but not for a week or more, and this is exactly the same phenomena you will see, so it's why we suggest against it. Corking is certainly still viable as an option if you wish to use it for storing of your own home brew or temporarily sealing an open bottle, but you will find that it is less and less common going forwards. This is especially true with small batches. For small numbers of bottles, it is a relatively easy and quick process. For bigger batches, you will want something like an electric corking system, or to find something that's a little less prone to problems. This is one reason why we rarely ever use corks for anything that we seal, preferring instead something like a swing top bottle that has all of the same benefits but none of the risk. Admittedly it does have its own quirks and problems, but they are easily outweighed by the ease and convenience. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it interesting, consider liking, sharing and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions you have below.